think we'll call this meeting to order. So all the bell ringers and the chapter 27, BFP 27 come up, please. And Peter, if you can hear me, we'll uh, show the mission statement up on the screen too. Okay, my name is uh, Steve McEwen, a uh, member of uh, Veterans for Peace, Chapter 27. Uh, one of the things that we do every November 11th, uh, called Armistice Day, that we call it, uh, also known as Veterans Day, uh, we ring bells instead of the 21-gun uh, uh, volley, uh, because bells were rung throughout the world, you couldn't find a bell to ring. Uh, after the war to end wars, uh, World War I was over with. Uh, these bells were rung in joy, uh, and they were also rung in sorrow. And today, that still applies. Uh, mostly in sorrow now because of uh, the uh, never-ending wars that we have. But we do this uh, also when it's our time to go. Uh, instead of the 21 gun volley. And we also do it at special events such as this and uh, to have us continue to work for peace. It's just our way of doing things. And uh, we have a couple of our handmade bells here. Uh, I think the one that is really beautiful here is, well, Larry's got one, but uh, Steve Gates. Uh, Steve, you want to just kind of bring it? People want to come up and see that. Steve is an artist right here. and. Uh, uh, get a gi, uh, uh, sculpture, uh, we have what, 11 or 12 bells that we made by hand? Well, anyway, we have a couple examples. Mine isn't good because I was in the hospital at the time and they used mine for, uh, uh, just for an example of the kiln working. <laughs> Looks like a German helmet. But uh, without further ado, uh, we'll be ringing that. You can't play any chess with this board because it's moving all over. On the 11th day of the 11th hour, you have 10 seconds to do so, and the 11th please month, try not to get hit in the world. for us to always recite our mission statement, so if you want to join us, please do. Peter will flash it up on the screen here. showing up I'm sure so but we have to get started and uh, I want to thank all my loyal supporters and volunteers for helping to get this show on the road and get everything all ready to go I want to thank Gary Stone and Eve for the use of this beautiful barn we've been here six years now and it works out great 
So thank you, Gary and Ian. I want to thank Barbara Gosman, our caterer, who will be providing the supper meal at 5.30. And Joe and Wood, who has the Fox Wagon outside, she'll have coffee, donuts, whatever you need, beverages, and she'll have noon uh, Monday menu options. And she has lots of uh, uh, cucumber salad, she said, this year. <laughs> <laughs> she said she always runs out every year, but she made more this year. Uh, if you, uh, I want to thank my re people helping to register and make sure you register and be sure you got a red ticket and drop one of the tickets in the box with your name and phone number because you need not be present to win. So be sure you get in on the drawing. We have some nice prizes at the end of the day. I want to thank Minnesota Family Speak Out as a supporter of this event and We'll probably be talking about that more later. And the John E. Farchetti Memorial Trust, which has uh, provided tremendous financial support for Peace Talk, and it'll actually help maintain Peace Talk for some years to come. And I want to thank them. So give them a round of applause. <laughs> and last but not least, I want to thank Steve Clemens and his organization. He supports Veterans for Peace every year with a large donation, and so thanks, Steve, too. So the facilities here, there's two restrooms up here, and then of course we got the porta potty outside. So if it's not raining, try to use that one for the guys anyway. And we have a water station right here, so use that and but and also the door well it's not going to be as hot today as i thought it was but we try to keep that door closed when you're so when you're going out and or in try to close the door behind you we'll keep keep us more comfortable in here if you do that okay and i want to thank our speakers Ann wright and danny Scherzen for traveling so far to come here And make sure you get a copy of the program at the registration table. So we're ready to go, and uh, I think we're see you on my schedule here. Yes, I'm going to call back uh, via P27, Mike McDonald, the president of Chapter 27. David, yeah. And Dave Larson, he's a uh, director, board of director for the National Veterans for Peace Organization. Dave. Steve McEwen is going to make an announcement about the uh, uh, Kellogg Brienne Pact and Trump uh, Treaty. Okay, I'll let them take over for now. Okay. Now I'm supposed to welcome everyone, so welcome. It's great to see so many peacemakers out here. I've been so proud. I've been serving only for. Uh, seven months now as president of the local uh, chapter 27, but uh, what a privilege to do it, to follow in the footsteps of so many people that are still working hard after decades of work, and obviously in these Trumpian times we have a myriad of things that are facing us, but we'll keep uh, doing our best, work doing little things that will add up to big things eventually. So welcome, good to see you all here. Glad to see my uh, the successor to the uh, the throne is doing so well. And Mike is very well done. He's doing a really great job so far. I, I will make this announcement to the full body. I've, been, I've mentioned it before, but we do have the peace bus that's parked out there, and the, the peace bus has a bell in it, and we encourage people to go and ring the bell for someone that they've lost. And uh, I think that's a real nice little uh, touch, and you could write the. You can write in the little log book uh, something about the name of the person or something about the memory of that person. And so be, feel free during the intermission or any time to go out there and walk into the bus and ring the bell. 
Bell ringing is a big thing, Liz, so you can tell her. Right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, do we have anybody from Iowa here? Look at this. Look at this. We got a. Oh. From the uh, Iowa chapter in, in Iowa City, and, and we got some Des Moines people here too. Yeah, very good. Uh, and uh, we, we have to build a bigger wall, I think. Uh, <laughs> and get all these, too many Iowegians coming in. This is a scary situation, right? But, uh, so anyway, uh, we are, I really encourage people with the, to come to this because this is a, we've had some really good peace docs, haven't we, Bill? And, and this is right up at the top of the heap. As I know both the, uh, I was privileged to be on KFAI with Danny yesterday in the, in the Twin Cities, and uh, he's he's good, you know, he's good. We, we, we're, we're, we'll finish that uh, tour of the uh, microbreweries in, uh, in, in Minneapolis at, at a later date, I think. So, and of course, Ann Wright is the the Energizer Bunny of uh, Veterans for Peace. <laughs> <laughs> if you 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 uh, if you try to follow her on Facebook, it's just like boom, boom, boom. I wish I had her our frequent flyer miles, man. She's she's got some beauties there too. But anyway, well, thank you for, again for coming out, and and I always like to thank people for coming out of your comfort zone on a Saturday and braving this really some torrential downpours coming down here and uh, and coming out here and, and doing that because sometimes for a lot of people. That is an important step, is to get out and to hear things. And it's easy to kind of just say, oh, I'm going to just do whatever and sit by the lake and fish or whatever. But you you come out here and I want to thank you all. Give yourself a nice round of applause for coming out here. <laughs> and I'm, I'd be remiss not to say that I'm on, on the National Board of Veterans for Peace. Uh, I escaped the I mean, I finished my term as president and and um, and I moved on to the National Board and, and the National uh, uh, Convention is in Spokane, Washington this, this year and you can still register for it. Uh, if you're going to drive out that way, it's going to be Danny Surgeon is going to be speaking at the convention. So if you hit, didn't get enough of Danny today, he'll be at the, our National Convention. And uh, we, we do have a lot of other things planned, but uh, I won't bore you with all the details, but uh, uh, there's some exciting stuff going on, including uh, um, the, f the first thing that on the agenda is the uh, we're going to be at Open Streets and Minnehaha Avenue tomorrow, uh, all day. So if you're biking around, it's a beautiful biking festival. They close off the streets, and only bike travel is allowed on it. We'll have the bus there with the bell and everything. So we encourage people to come down and either help us hand out stickers or, or talk to people. It's a real nice opportunity. Then on, on, on the first part of October, I mean August coming up, is, uh, is the, uh, the, uh, the Hiroshima and Nagasaki events. And I think we may have literature, Larry, do we have literature at the table on that? And that's a beautiful ceremony in the morning. We have a bell ringing and, and uh, storytelling by Elaine. And, uh, and it's a very nice event in the morning at the Lake Harriet Peace Garden, the Japanese uh, Peace Garden there, and it's a very beautiful event. So we're welcome to come to that. And that's all I got. So enjoy. I will not be satisfied until every home, school, office, factory, church, and public building has a framed copy your desire for peace will be law. Hold not your peace. This was the General Pact for the Renunciation of War, signed at Paris on August 27, 1928, better known as the kellogg brien Pact, named after the only person ever to have won the Nobel Peace Prize from Minnesota, then Republican Senator. Frank Kellogg, which Kellogg Boulevard in St. Paul is named after, not the serial, and which we had our convention last year at the 90th anniversary of the signing of the kellogg brien Pact. There's 85 countries that have signed this right now, and it's still law. 
it's against the law to go to war. The United States was the big pusher on this, and when it was signed into law back then, by a vote of the Senate, the supreme law of the land, 85 to 1. The only person that voted against it said it wasn't strong enough. So, we pass this out each year to the essay winner here that uh, Bill has here in Red Wing, to their chapter, to a high school student who won't be here this year, but we'll get one to them. But also, uh, we like to give this to our uh, speakers. And we'll be doing that here, but I just want to say that uh, in 1930, the Postmaster General, just to give you an idea, this was the biggest news event in 1928, even more so than when Lindbergh crossed the ocean. In 1930, the Postmaster General sent out to over 40,000 post offices that the United States to order that the kellogg Brien Pact, right here, the one-page document that the coloring, Colleen Raleigh uh, started us getting these vinyl banners printed up, to all the post offices that said the United States is interested in the cause of peace. Okay? That we should have that today. We'd be so lucky. So, without further ado right here, I would like to present this to Danny Surgeon and Ann Wright, please. I just must say what Dave said too about the uh, about Ann traveling around the world. I majored in geography, and my God, going on Facebook with Ann, I get an education in geography. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, the ban the nuclear weapons effort uh, is part of the international campaign. We're part of that with uh, Veterans for Peace and Women Against Military Madness, who actually started it. Here, uh, they're a member of the uh, international campaign, as is the National Veterans for Peace. Here locally, in the state of Minnesota, uh, we've got a petition drive going on, that uh, uh, paper petitions that were taken around to every town and city in Minnesota, all the incorporated cities, and sometimes we get place names, too. Uh, there's 853 of them. Uh, we've got 598 towns and cities right now represented. Uh, with 18,600 and some uh, uh, paper signatures that we're going to, when we get all the towns and cities, that stack is going in and we're meeting individually. We have with some of them, with our senators and our uh, congressional people, to get their commitment one way or the other, where they stand on abolishing nuclear weapons that 122 nations have signed on to. And when that becomes ratified, as it does here in the United States, the same thing that all these countries have to do through their Senate or corresponding bodies, it becomes international law when 50 of those nations sign it. Right now there's, I think Jay, isn't there 22? 23. 23, and they expect, I believe, at the end of the year that it'll be close to 50. They'll be pariahs then. It's the nine, nine nuclear nations that are resisting it, and we're trying to work on that right now. So. I've got copies, uh, I've got them in my car right now. Uh, we're taking them on the bus. Dave's gonna be, and Craig I know will be out there on the bus, Minnehaha Avenue getting those, and we're traveling around the state. Need all the help we can get. I encourage you to help, thank you. Thank you, Mike, Dave, Steve, for those announcements. I should also acknowledge some other people uh, I'd like to acknowledge Penny Gardner, who picked up Danny Surgeon at the airport, and then Ann Wright, and made, made them very comfortable, and thank, thank Penny. Penny. <laughs> Where are you, Penny? Okay, all right. Thank you, Penny. I also want to thank WAM, Women Against Military Madness. They helped promote this event, and how many uh, WAM members do we have here today? Yeah, good number. Yeah. I also want to thank the Red Wing Republican Eagle. It's not as Republican as it sounds, but... 
because they've been tr tremendous help this year. They they put a promotional article in the paper about 10 days ago, and they had a commentary by Danny Scherzen printed in the paper, and writes commentary, my, edit my letter to the editor, and I want to thank Ann Jacobson, our editor, who has to take, you take some courage to do that when you're writing a, paper, a little local paper. So I'm not sure if many other editors around the country would do that. So thank them. <laughs> and I want to thank Tom Fian, our videographer, who at the last minute agreed to videotape our, our proceedings today and make, we'll make them available to look at later, either by DVDs or online or whatever. So, thank you, Tom. Okay, gotta look at the schedule here. I think we're ready for Larry Ditburner. He has a, a little uh, biography I'd like to read. Larry is a Vietnam veteran. He was drafted in 1965. He's a song leader and songwriter based in St. Paul. Larry grew up in a musical family where singing was what brought joy to their lives. Singing and song leading are his passion. His love is leading community singing with ordinary people. He has been leading and composing music at the St. Francis Cabrini Church in Minneapolis since mustering out of the Army in 1967. And he is a co-director with Brett Hesla of this side-by-side -side chorus composed of folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their allies. Now retired, Larry's also taught music at Lake Country Montessori School in Minneapolis for 40 years. So please welcome Larry Ditburner. We've had entertainment here for 16 years, and it's a lot of fun. But today, we are the entertainment. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to sing a lot of songs. A lot. This afternoon, we'll be singing more songs. Right now, we're just going to do two or three because I want to get you. I want to get you psyched up. I want to get you excited. I want to get you stomping. But right now, we're going to do songs that you can learn and sing easily. So if you hear harmony in this song, Sing the harmony. If you don't, sing the melody. Even if you think you can't carry a tune in a bucket, it really doesn't matter. It really does not matter. Let go of that tape that says, don't sing. Okay? Because what it's about is the connection of us all singing together and making that community together. It gives us solidarity and strength. Gonna lay down my sword and shield down by the riverside. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, gonna lay down my sword and shield. Down by the riverside, and I'm gonna save war no more. I ain't gonna save war no more. Ain't gonna save war no more. Ain't gonna save war no more. Ain't gonna save. Plant. 
I'm going to shut it down.
Um, back in, um, in the, uh, the first day after the election in 2017, there was an African-American woman named Melanie Damore. And she wrote this song that I'm going to teach you. It's really easy. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other. So you notice that put is three whole beats long. Give it all of them. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. You gotta put one foot in front of the other and lead with love. Put Every time we sing that, we always sing it all together, twice through. On the verses, I'm going to sing out a line, and then you echo it. Okay? It's call and response. You echo just what I say, right? Don't give up hope. Don't give up hope. You're not alone. You're not alone. Don't you give up. Don't you give up. Keep moving on. Keep moving on. you got to put one foot in front of the other. And keep with love. chapters that are present here today. You've already heard from the President Mike McDonald from Chapter 27. I'm representing as the leader of VFP 115 here in Red Wing. But, uh, thank you, but actually I'm not a, a veteran. I'm a veterinarian, but not a vet. Veteran. <laughs> so, I should have started a veterinarian for peace, but that would have been a tough, tough role. <laughs> Especially when I was working, I retired to become a full-time peace activist, and I joined the Chapter 115. But I'm an associate member, and uh, I encourage those of you who are not veterans, you can join Veterans for Peace too. If you if you read our mission statement, come on and join us. We need we need more help. We need more bodies out there. That's the name of the game. So please come forward, and also. I want to acknowledge, uh, I know Gilbert Langdorf is here from Iowa. Gilbert? Is Gilbert here? 
They came all the way from Des Moines, but I don't know. They might have gotten held up by the weather. Anyway, he was going to bring their whole uh, leadership team from uh, Chapter 163, but they might show up later, I hope, but we'll see. So who else do we have? Some chapters from Wisconsin? Or Iowa City, yeah. You, you want to... Duluth, yeah. Anybody from Duluth chapter? Bob okay. Salmon. Okay. Great. How about uh, Wisconsin? Ron. Ron. Oh, there's Ron. My friend Ron. Yeah. Hey, Ron. Wow. I didn't expect him to be here. He he, uh, he always flies up, flies down here from Fargo, and I didn't think he'd make it today, but. Well, how, how did you make? How did you manage that? I stayed on the ground. Oh, you drove? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're here. Yeah. What chapter number is your? Yeah. Yeah. One fifty-four. Okay, one fifty-four. Okay. And then, and your chapter. One thirteen, Hawaii. Why? How many members? Okay. <laughs> Great. So anybody else I forgot to if you want if you want a chance to say what what you're doing in your community, you're welcome to come to Mike. And we do have the uh, Brainerd uh, Peace Coalition. Oh yeah, Brainerd. Oh. Yeah, Olson, yeah, Olson. Mr. Olson. Pardon me, I forgot I could can't think of your first name. Doug. Doug, yeah. Why, why couldn't I think of that? Doug Olson, yeah, he's with uh, Brainerd Peace Team, and uh, I'm going to have him come up here because he has an event he'd like to announce. It's coming up in September. So, Doug, please come up. Thank you very much. Okay, Doug. This is your first peace talk. I know you've tried to get to you tried to get to all the others, but. I have. This is my very first, although I'm not the first member of Brainerd Area Coalition for Peace to be here. We've had other members come here over the years. Uh, Larry Fisk, who is co-founder of Brainerd Area Coalition for Peace, he's been here. His son Lad was here. In fact, they were singing, I think, when they were here, like in 2014. Uh, Robin Hensel, who's very active yeah. in Little Falls, she was here, you know, in 2013 with her dear friend Teresa Scorseth. Uh, sadly, Teresa passed away on March 21st. You know, she was uh, a very dear friend and a great peace activist, and that's going to be part of our event at Camp Ripley, which I'll get into in just a moment. But yeah, Brainerd Area Coalition for Peace, we are a local peace organization. We got started right when the U.S. and NATO started bombing Afghanistan in October 2001. So we've been around for quite a while, you know. We're a fairly small group. We have about, you know, two dozen members or so, but we do a lot. And... Uh, we just earlier this month on July 4th, we marched in the Brainerd Fourth of July parade, yeah. and I can tell you oh, wow. from personal experience, you know we've been marched. We had to fight to get into that parade. They wouldn't let us in in 2003. <laughs> wouldn't let us in. We had to contact the American Civil Liberties Union, got an out of court settlement to let us march. So, wow. you know, we marched. that parade since 2004. In fact, my friends uh, Bob and Pat Hammond from the Duluth chapter, they've joined us the last few years marching with us and um, it's a great event, great way to get our message out for peace. So we just did that. We have monthly meetings, we have peace vigils and uh, in fact in just a few more weeks um, we're going to be at the Crow Wing County Fair. So the Crow Wing County Fair starts on Tuesday, July 30th, and it runs through Saturday, August 3rd. We have a booth there. We've had a booth there since 2003. And uh, it's going to be an industrial building, number one. And the booth is open from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. So if you happen to be in Brainerd during that time from Tuesday, July 30th through August, Saturday, August 3rd, please come and visit us. You know, we will be there. We have dedicated volunteers. We have literature. We talk with people who come by. I mean, the Crowland County Fair gets a lot of people. I've heard it's the fourth or fifth busiest fair in the state of Minnesota. 
So please, if you're up in Brainerd, between those dates, July 30th and August 3rd, please visit us at the Crow Wing County Fair. Um, we have buttons. One of our members, Elaine Kane, makes the buttons. She hands them out. Um, the kids love the buttons. Elaine comes up with some new ones every year. But Bill me uh, mentioned the event that we're going to be doing in September. This is an extremely important event for us. It is our Camp Ripley Peace Vigil. How many of you are familiar with Camp Ripley? Good, good. A lot of people know about Camp Ripley. Camp Ripley is a National Guard base. It's located just north of Little Falls, so it's south of Brainerd, north of Little Falls. It is the biggest base in Minnesota. Huge base. Um, and that's where, you know, they have deployed many troops to Iraq and Afghanistan over the years. And they also have drones, not killer drones, not yet, but they are training people on how to use surveillance drones. And when you know how to use surveillance drones, you can use killer drones. They've had this drone program at Camp Ripley since 2012. What Camp Ripley does every other year is they have an event called Open House Day. They invite the community to come in. I believe it's a free event. I don't think it costs anything. And what it is, is our good friend Robin Hensel says, it's a recruitment and retention event. In other words, they want to get the young people to go into the military, so they give kids, we're talking little kids, like younger than 10 years old, they give them rides on tanks and helicopters and Humvees. They even, Colleen Raleigh and Mary Bedolin from Wham, they took a photo, our last Camp Ripley Peace Vigil in 2017, they, had, they have a photo of a National Guardsman showing a little boy, couldn't have been older than 10, showing this little boy how to shoot a machine gun. That, that's a big part of their event is to propagandize these little kids and hope that, hey kids, this is more fun, you know? Don't you want to join the military too when they, you turn 18? They don't show the kids the PTSD. They don't show veterans with shattered bo bodies and arms. They don't show dead people. They don't show civilians that are being killed. No, they just make it look fun and like an adventure. That's why we're going to be outside Camp Ripley during Open House Day. Open House Day is on Sunday, September 15th. So I want to repeat the date, Sunday, September 15th. We're going to be outside Camp Ripley, Brainerd Area Coalition for Peace, our friends and veterans for peace, women against military madness, anyone, please, who opposes um, war, who opposes militarism, the indoctrination of our youth, and as well, police militarization. Camp Ripley trains a lot of local police departments. There's a heavy police presence there. This, uh, the State Highway Patrol is trained there. So they learn how to use these military weapons. So there are many reasons to be at Camp Ripley. We're going to be there for the entirety of Open House Day on Sunday, September 15th, from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're going to be there so just about everyone who goes in and out of Camp Ripley sees us. We have a float, and uh, we have our signs, our flags, banners. We try to talk with people. And uh, believe it or not, the last time we were there in 2017, we actually got a pretty decent response. Um, you know, most people, you know, we're still against us, but we had some people, including a few National Guardsmen, thumbs up, peace signs, so it was really good. And then, and then afterward, so after that vigil gets done, we're going to be meeting just north of Camp Ripley at Morrison County Park, and we're going to have a potluck, and we'll have a discussion, and we're going to do a tribute to our dear friend, Teresa Scorseth. So please, I encourage you, if you have the opportunity, come join us at the Camp Ripley Peace Vigil, Sunday, September 15th, between 10 a.m., and 2 p.m. and we'll have more information. We have a website, uh, BrainerdPeace.org, and our public Facebook page, Brainerd Area Coalition for Peace. Thank you very much. Thank you, Doug. Great. I'll be there. Who else wants to? Who's going to be there? <laughs> oh, the Beast Bus will be there too. Good. And if you've never protested before, I know it's a little intimidating the first time. But you'll get over it. <laughs> and you, even when people are flashing up, seeing things that you're going on. But, uh, I'll but we, that's... Uh, I'll never see it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, they do. Well, they probably say things anyway that's not complimentary to... Get a job. Yeah, or leave. Or go to Russia, or live in Russia, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, send her back. But, uh, yeah. Please join these protests because that's what it takes. There's people showing their support of peace building. And uh, Peter will get the Michael Knox video up. No. Michael Knox is the director and leader and an organizer. No, he initiated the organization, U.S. Peace Memorial Foundation. 
and he's going to talk about on a YouTube video, which is pre-prepared, about his organization. And we actually have a Peace Prize winner here with us. Anne Wright is the winner of the U.S. Peace Prize. And I'm, I'm proud to say that we've had four other Peace Prize winners speak here at Peace Talk. So that's awesome. Oops, somebody's calling me. <laughs> I'll get them later. <laughs> yeah, turn your phones off. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Michael Knox, uh, he won't, well, I'll let him tell you all about, about his foundation. Uh, I joined, I know Colleen Rowley is Colleen here. Yeah, she joined, some others. Oh, Steve Clemens. And he's actually nominated this year for the Peace Prize. Hey, we're ready. I'll let Michael speak. Hello, Peace Talk, Veterans for Peace, and those of you who are honorees and founding members of the U.S. Peace Memorial Foundation. Thank you, Bill, for giving me a few moments to speak about the mission of the U.S. Peace Memorial to honor Americans who've had the courage to speak out against war and to propose peaceful alternatives to war. Our mission is to change the U.S. war culture. In my lifetime, the U.S. has invaded more than 30 countries, killing millions of people, wounding tens of millions, and making refugees of even more. We have a culture of war in the United States, and those who speak out against war or for peaceful alternatives to war are often labeled unpatriotic, traitors, un-American, and anti-military. There are consequences, sometimes severe emotional, financial, and personal consequences of opposing war in the United States. One reason we have so many wars is because few Americans have the courage to speak out. The purpose of the U.S. Peace Memorial Foundation is to honor, document, recognize, and move forward as role models those organizations and individuals who have the courage to speak up against war and to stand for peace. So the U.S. Peace Memorial Foundation has three projects. The U.S. Peace Registry, the U.S. Peace Prize, and the U.S. Peace Memorial as a national monument in Washington, D.C. The U.S. Peace Registry is a document publication currently online will be published soon as a book. You can see it at uspeacefromwild.org. Just click on registry. There's an individual section and an organization section. And many of you here today are already included. I hope that those of you who are not will consider documenting what you've done for peace in the U.S. Peace Registry. There is an application at the beginning of the registry and I hope that you will consider filling it out and joining us in the registry. Our second project is the awarding of the annual U.S. Peace Prize. We've awarded this prize for the past 10 years. Previous recipients are Cindy Sheehan, Dennis Kucinich, Noam Chomsky, Medea Benjamin, Chelsea Manning, Kathy Kelly, Code Pink, Veterans for Peace, David Swanson, and your guest speaker today, the Honorable Anne Wright. This year, 2019, we have 10 very qualified, strong candidates, nominees for the U.S. Peace Prize, and we'll announce the winner later in the year. The third project is to build the U.S. Peace Memorial as a national monument in Washington, D.C. In order to change our war culture, we have to convince Americans that it's socially acceptable to speak out against war. We're going to do that by covering the monument with quotations from famous Americans. They'll be surprised by the strong anti-war content of people that they've known and read about. There'll be quotations from American presidents, historical figures such as Benjamin Franklin, 
Helen Keller, Margaret Mead, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., uh, Muhammad Ali, Albert Einstein, and other Americans. And we hope by including these quotations that young people and international visitors and others will understand that we have a long history of speaking out against war and that it is socially acceptable. The monument will also provide access to information about the actions, the anti-war actions, of those who have been honored with the U.S. Peace Prize and those who are honored by being included in the U.S. Peace Registry. There will be details about their specific anti-war actions, and we think in the end we'll have identified 300 to 400 specific behaviors that people have engaged in in this country to oppose war. We will elevate these people to role models by including them in the National Monument. Building a National Monument is a very expensive process. In fact, awarding the annual Peace Prize and editing the U.S. Peace Registry takes resources. We have founding members, and I hope that many of you will join us as founding members. You can learn about what it means to be a founding member by going to uspeacememorial.org, our website, clicking on donors, and learning about that. Once we have a thousand founding members, and we're currently at about 360, we will go public with our project with our plans to build the U.S. Peace Memorial. Till that time, we're involved in fundraising and documenting what Americans have done to oppose war. I hope that you have a successful conference. Thank you very much for listening to me, and please join us, be involved, complete an application to be considered for the U.S. Peace Registry, and if you're so inclined, please contact me at Knox at uspeacefromoil.org so that we can discuss how you might get more involved in our project. Thank you very much. But we can hear you, we can hear you now. All right, great, great. Well, uh, if you heard the video, I'm just wondering if there are any questions. Yeah. Okay. Oh, the question is, how much does it cost to become a member oh, okay. or founder? Well, many people make small donations, but to be a founding member is just a one hundred dollar donation. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, we we are not going public with our plan to build a national monument, the U.S. Peace Memorial, until we have a thousand founding members representing all fifty states. So at at this point. You know, we're at about 84% uh, of our goal. We have 42 states plus the District of Columbia, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Um, so we need to add some more founding members. But in order to get to 1,000, uh, we need well over 600 more members. We have, uh, I think, 360-some founding members at this point. So that's only about 35 or 36% of our goal. So we need more founding members. We need to get those other states that we're missing, uh, the eight states that we're missing, which are uh, Arkansas, Delaware, Mississippi, Nebraska, South Dakota, Rhode Island, uh, South Carolina, and West Virginia. And once we have a thousand founding members representing all 50 states, we will we will go public with this. Um, and feel much more confident that it's going to move forward and. Uh, you know, be accepted. Okay, I think that's all, we, all the time we have now for now. Uh, thank you, Michael. All right, and, uh, all right I, thank you so much, and have a successful conference. I'm sure it will be. Okay, thank you, Michael. Bye. 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 Uh, Peter, you can get up uh, the music video now. Yeah. We'll get the, but uh, Dick Bernard, he's also a member, founding member of the uh, U.S. Peace Memorial Foundation. And he brought some flyers for the U.S. Peace Memorial Foundation. If you want to take it home with you, so I'll have. Well, they'll be back at the tape registration table and back. So, in 2012, I played a music video, Tina Turner. We don't need another hero, 
and I play it all a lot at home, and it's one of my favorite anti-war songs, you know, and uh, if you watch the movie, it's not necessarily an anti-war movie, but the song is, is definitely an anti-war movie, and if you, as you listen to it, we are the children, we are the ones they left behind, and Thunderdome is war, the war machine, so as you listen to it, uh, kind of think, listen to the words carefully, and we'll, we'll let it go. Okay, Peter, ready? But we'll keep going as long as we have to. So, it's, and uh, so we'll keep at it. 
Okay, we have time for a break now. We'll take a 15 minute break and then we'll call back to order and then we'll have Ann Wright present her presentation. Thank you. Okay, take a little break. <laughs>